All right, I'm on. Wow, good afternoon. Sure, it's afternoon. Yes, it is. Hello, Facebook fans. Hello, friends and well wishers. This is your very own Jesse of Sisters True Love Group International. Why we say nothing matters but true love. Afternoon, y'all. I hope everyone is doing okay. Guess what? I just finished a series on CPR. And uh, I had a topic to briefly discuss today before this CPR came up. But we bless God for His grace. I hope you watched the series on the CPR. I think it's basically my first time doing CPR live on Facebook. You know, I always touch base about it. But at least doing it live. Thank God for my student that came in and she was okay for me to use her as a life um, guide to teach CPR today briefly. Hopefully, more classes. Like last week, I had more than seven sessions of CPR. It was crazy last week. Unfortunately, I wasn't even thinking about going live on Facebook. I was so busy teaching and teaching and all that. But from now on, I think I'm going to make my students agree with me. Input, because every input is very important. Nothing is stupid. You understand? Everyone's in to say hello, something for me to know that you can hear me, and uh, before we get started, uh, Fidele, mm -hmm. can you please get me the extension cord in my room? And uh, let me see if I have my charger here for my phone. Thank you, so that this phone will not disappoint me. I have a quick one today. Mm. All right. Oh my, oh my, the internet is a little bit low. Welcome on board, welcome on board. I have a little topic right now about healthcare providers. When I'm talking about healthcare providers, I'm talking about the nurses, the doctors, the pharmacists, the physical therapists, the physicians, you know, the MPs, nurse practitioners, you know. I'm talking about the CNAs, the medication aides, you know, everyone of us. Oh, hmm. Yes. All right. We're back on board. Yes, yes, yes. We're talking about healthcare providers today. You know, the doctors and all that. And single dads or dads that are staying at home, you know, doing more for the family instead of working. I want us to tell them, well done. Well done. That's the word. We want to say we appreciate them. We we'll thank God for their lives to the nurses and the doctors, the pharmacists, the respiratory therapists, the occupational therapists, the physical therapists, everyone in the healthcare, the medication aids and the CNAs. Most times we we'll overlook their situations, their lifestyles. They give so much. They give so much and they return. They receive less. We see the situation that we believe nurses make a lot of money, doctors make a lot of money, pharmacists, all these people. But there's something very, very important and very unique that individually we have forgotten about these people. Healthcare providers are going through a lot of depression setbacks, frustration, you know, stress, burned out in many ways. Most of these people work round clock. Honestly, most of them are parents that have children at home or husbands that have wives at home or wives that have husband at home and children. They work in the healthcare field so tediously that they forget about themselves. And we'll see the word healthcare. We are expected to be superheroes. We are supposed to take it in. Healthcare providers were supposed to suck every situation in. Have it all. We are supposed not to complain. They expect you to love and pretend that all is well. 
And that is the reason why I have decided to say, well done, everyone out there that is into health. God bless you. I just want them to understand that we appreciate them. For me in particular, being a nurse, I know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes you work so hard, your brain and your mind is really occupied with the things that we face every day in the field of work. And people think all we look for is the money part of health. No, it's not the issue. I will bring you guys statistics as we go. Most of these healthcare providers have issues that you cannot even relate to. Most of them have seen people dying on their shift like off and on. You see a patient that is a little bit healthy, they came in for a checkup through diagnosis and testing, something else comes out in their system and they end up being confined in the hospital setting. You get so acquainted to your patient and so close to them, you know, you become a family away from family with these patients, you know. Before you know it, this patient will die. These nurses see things like this, this shocks every day. And we were expected not to cry. We are expected not to show emotion. You are expected to be a, a serious doctor and serious nurse and just tell the family members, oh, I, I, I feel what you're feeling. Everything is going to be okay. But nobody gives the healthcare providers the opportunity to express how they felt when they lost a patient that is so close to them. They keep the depression and this pain piled up inside. They have no way of expressing it because the society sees us as strong and people that are supposed to take it in. Most of them go through these cycles of depression based on what they are seeing in the field of their job. We we'll go through this pain, seeing the death every day, seeing people go into hospice, you know, seeing people get some part of their bodies, you know, amputated and all that. But yet, you're not expected to cry as a nurse or a doctor or, or a healthcare provider. You are expected to be strong. And there's no opportunity for you to express your feelings. I brought a good news to us today. If you're a healthcare provider or you have someone that is a healthcare provider, one way or the other, a church member or a friend, Something like that. Sometimes you need to encourage them to express their feelings. Ask them how they are doing at work. How, ask them what is going on. Do you love your job? What makes you love this job? Ask them how do they express their feelings at work. I'm thinking in healthcare. Let's say for instance, hospital settings. They need to get a psych unit whereby nurses can go in to meet a psychiatric doctor to express their feelings of how they're feeling at work, to express their pains and depressions, not to bundle it in. Why am I saying this? These days, scientifically, it has been proven that most nurses are going through blood pressure, you know, going through heart attack, going through all those diseases. Yet, we are supposed to be nurses who care for people. How come we are going through all these diseases? Why? Because nobody is giving us an opportunity to express how we feel. Nobody wants to know that a nurse can be crying because she lost a patient that she cares about so much. Nobody can believe that a nurse can go to the bathroom just because she lost a patient. She'll go in there, lock herself up and cry and cry. Her heart is broken. She's torn apart. You know, she did all she could as a nurse, but yet she could not help this patient. This nurse is going through so much pain. This nurse is going through emotional trauma. And not only that, most of them go through things from their houses to uh, their job and they don't have any opportunity to, to visit a psych doctor who can, you know, not show them spiritually, talk to them, you know, encourage them and tell them that they are doing a good job and it's okay for a nurse to cry or a doctor to cry. No, we want to see them as strong people. Statistically, let me bring you a statistic that you can research. According to the... UK, you know, official of national statistics. It has been proven that within the year 2011, 
through 2017, more than 300 nurses in the United Kingdom committed suicide. Though they had the job opportunity, you know, we know that healthcare, you know, profession is very stable. Most people want to be nurses and doctors and the pharmacists and the physicians, assistant nurse practitioners, you know, physical therapists and occupational therapists and speech therapists. We all want to be in the health field. But nobody knows the consequences and the pains and the shortcomings that these nurses and these healthcare providers go through. It's been proven within the year of 2011 through 2017, in UK alone, 300 nurses committed suicide and the question is oh we talk they make a lot of money money is not all about it it's not all about money all the time i can tell you that it's not all about money sometimes your mental stability your mental well-being is something money cannot buy and that is the trouble, the trauma, and the pain that these healthcare providers are facing on a daily basis. You see a nurse that goes into work. The doctor is there trying to perform, you know, surgery and all that. And this is what they've been doing and successfully, this doctor has been doing it and it's been successful. All of a sudden, this particular one, he could not succeed and the patient died. You expect the doctor to be a doctor, wear his white scrub and just keep on moving. Nobody give them time to have a say, to sit at one place and see how they feel and let them burst out and cry and express their feelings. We'll bundle it in. And they keep on facing challenges. They go through depression, deep depression, very deep, that you can't even know how to explain. Their mental status, it begins to affect the way they look. You see nurses, all they want to do, just walk, 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 walk. They're always angry and easy to react to situations. It's not that they're bad people. But because all that they're going through, they have no means and no way of expressing the innermost of them how they're feeling at work, what they face at work today. They come home, they're still facing issues in the house. The children are running all over the place. Their spouse are giving them stress. The job is overwhelming. And you see young people drinking blood pressure like it's cooking because of the challenges that we face at our job places. Our mental status has been altered due to the circumstances that we face as healthcare providers. And we don't want the people out there to see us as if we're weaknesses. No, it's okay. It's about time we tell the doctors, this healthcare provider, it's okay to break down at work. It's okay to just break down and tear up and cry. It's okay for you to express your feelings. If you have to yell, it's okay for you to yell when you lost someone so dear as a patient. So ease it off in your mind. How come people make money? In healthcare providing, you know, we make good money, but at the same time, we die so easily because nobody is allowing us to express ourselves. I tell you, the most nurses too are the people that like healthcare providers who will lack vacations, will lack the opportunity to nurture ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally, and all that. Financially, we could be flamboyant, don't get me wrong, but money doesn't buy peace of mind. I just want to speak to healthcare providers that will appreciate us. And most times, if you don't speak up, nobody cares. It's about time that healthcare providers come together and express their feelings at place of work. We need to organize some, you know, what do I call it, community uh, conferences, you know, where nurses can express themselves. It's not all about how to make money or which field of nursing you have to go in. How do you handle stress at work? It's about time we discuss those things openly. How do a nurse handle stress at work and combine it with physical stress in the house and combine it with her personal stress, how she looks, how she takes care of herself and all that. We need to give room for these people to express how they feel. If you are a husband watching me and your wife is a nurse, it's about time that you don't just judge her for being cranky all the time, for being bitter all the time, because you don't take time to sit back and ask yourself, who knows what this lady went through at work today? 
who knows who is who that is sick at work? You know, when you're a mother and you see little children on chemo and all that, but you have healthy and where to do children at home. You know, your brain is like, God, you could have been me, but you cannot express that feeling because you're at work. You come home, the people at home don't want to give you the room to so find out how your day went. Nurses pile it up, healthcare providers pile it up, and before you know it, most of them are committing suicide. And people outside judge them because you don't know what they're going through. You don't even know where they're coming from. You don't know how much people they have loved at work and these people pass before their eyes. You don't know how much they've been yelled at by family members of their patients. You don't know how much they've been told, you're not competent as a nurse. Why are you even in this field? But they're still doing it because they love what they're doing. You don't give them room to express their feelings. And before you know it, my regular saying, things fall apart and the center cannot hold. It is a real thing. Nurses, healthcare providers, doctors, and all these people, they are human beings. They have blood running in their veins. They are just like you and I. I am a nurse myself. I know how it feels, you know. This weekend for the past 11 years, you can imagine. Since 2008, I've never had the vacation to say I am sitting by myself without being worried about the children and my bills and patients and all that for 11 good years. And you can imagine what is going on in my brain. Just because I took this weekend off vacation, my mind is renewed. My appetite for life increased. My joy in the things that I'm doing as a nurse just gets so elevated. And the way I see life is much appetizing and much, you know, fulfilling. Because I took time out. Thank God to my friend in Washington, D.C. Chinelo, who encouraged me so much. And my personal assistant in the office, Miss Jessie, you have to take a break. And my boss, who said, Mommy, you need it. I didn't do it because I have the money financially to go out and lodge myself somewhere and just sleep for three days. I did it because my mental status was kind of shifted. All I was thinking is about life and bills and all that. And nobody was thinking about me. I keep on pushing every day. Pushing every day. But guess what? When the body gets weak, it will break down. And if that happens, I want you to think about your children. I want you to think about your loved ones, your husband, your wife. I want you to think about your mom, your dad, your brothers and sisters, your friends and well-wishers. People around you that care so much about you. I want you to think about them. What happens if you break down and you don't make it? Just because you want to be a strong healthcare provider. We have feelings. And people need to stop judging us. Because these are the reasons why most of us are so easy to get irritated. When you say stuff to them, they get so snappy. Because they have so much going on. Our mental status is so important. Our mental well-being is very important. And I'm encouraging every one of us that are in the healthcare provider to make our time for yourself. Make our time to treat yourself right. Make our time to appreciate you. Make our time to rest this body. Make our time to tell yourself you are special, you are valued, you are wonderfully made, and you deserve the best that this life can offer. Let no one tell me otherwise. I am made for signs and wonders. I am tired of piling up. I'm going to take time out and chill off. And it works so magically. You will see the radiation of peace of mind. I'm telling you guys, I went out just for weekend, honestly. I felt like I've traveled for seven years. I slept so much on Saturday. I was even scared, like, did I get drunk somehow? I, I didn't drink. 
But my body was so weak because mentally I shut down the bills and the worries of children and the worries of school and the worries of work and all that. I decided to just think about me alone for that last weekend. And it gave me so much realization and peace. I slept on Saturday. Man, I woke up, my eyes is open, but my spiritual eyes is still sleeping. <laughs> you don't even understand. I slept so well. Sunday, I double slept again. When I left that hotel room, Monday morning, my goodness, I was like, welcome to the hell club of bills and all that. But the three nights was so relaxing. Nobody will do it for you. If you are a nurse, you're a doctor, you're a pharmacist, or you're anything in the health, that you need someone to talk to. Go and get a psych evaluation. Talk to a psychiatrist, talk to a psychologist, talk to somebody. Talk to someone that can open up those, you know, those areas that you piled up. Open it up a little bit and free yourself. Don't get to the point of depression, so stress that you end up killing yourself. It is not healthy to think you can do it all because nobody does it all. Express your feelings. Express how you feel. And don't wait for nobody to tell you how you feel. Tell somebody how you feel. Even if they don't want to listen, be able to express yourself. We are doing so much. It's like mothers at home. Don't get me wrong. Some fathers do more than mothers too. You know, they're like fathers, but they're really mothers to the kids. It's always good for you not to pile up things inside. Learn to communicate your feelings. Learn to share your feelings, good or bad. Learn to appreciate you. Learn to share your ideas your feelings, how you feel, shouldn't be something that you put yourself in a cage or in a prison in your own body. Normally, we say black, uh, black brothers of age 40 and 45 and above are prone to hypertension. That's no longer statistically stable right now. It's there statistically proven. But guess what? If we can do another research, I will tell you that the question is healthcare providers. Almost 90% of them are all drinking blood pressure medication. Believe it or not, whether you're a white nurse, or a white doctor, a black doctor, or a white, it doesn't matter. But healthcare providers, almost every one of them, thank God he has been so faithful to me, almost every one of them are drinking blood pressure medication. You ask, why is that so? They make money, isn't it? But they work too much. They overwork themselves. And they have less time to rest and enjoy the money. There's money, but there's no peace of mind. Because the body is tired. The body is not appreciated. The body is not nurtured. That is why you see people in healthcare, they always look unkept. Don't get me wrong. They have the money. They have the money to buy any kind of thing that they want to. But because the inside is not receiving it really good, they wear the highest dress, but they look like they are sick because they are really sick. When your mental status is altered, you are really sick. And there's a saying that people say when you have people, you are richer than people who have money. It is true. When you can have someone to talk to and express yourself, it's worth more than billions of dollars or anything you might call it. So all over the world, as you watch me, if nobody appreciates what you guys do as healthcare providers, I appreciate you all because I'm in it. I know how tough it is for me to get out of my comfort zone to treat myself right. It's all about us treating others right. It's all about us doing for people. 
It's all about healthcare providers satisfying someone else's wants and needs. It's all about us reaching out to somebody's goal and mission. It's all about us doing for people. It's all about us making sure everybody around us is okay. It's all about us being there for everyone. But the question is, who is going to be there for you? Thank you, Bro Simmons, for that comment. Take time for yourself. Healthcare providers, say enough is enough. Express your feelings. Those depressions got to get out. Depression is what you make out of faith, out of situations of life. Depression don't just come. It is the way you welcome situations of life because of society that we live in it, that nurses, you should not cry at work. When someone dies, they just expect you to stand there like a tree, like, you know, that's how we're educated in nursing. You don't say nothing to the dying families. You don't say nothing to those that lost their loved ones. You just sit down by their bedside or stay by the room and just watch like video. You know, you just sit down and be watching. Oh, my little niece, how are you, Francesca? God bless you. You don't want to sit down and be watching. And this is the practice nurses and healthcare providers have been doing all these years. They want you to be a perfect perfect employee in a hospital don't cry when somebody dies you're the nurse why will you be crying in front of the patient's family no 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 it's okay it's about time we tell ourselves the truth go to the bathroom excuse yourself go and cry you're a human being doctors you stand there like a, a stranger you know you, you can pronounce somebody oh we'll regret to announce or oh, we we'll lost this person and you think the doctor is okay because doctor is doctor. They don't cry. They don't have no feelings. Family members think you don't connect with them. But we connect more than they can even imagine. The doctor is breaking down inside, looking at a little child pass. It's just like when I lost my son in the hospital. When the, the, the medical director came into my room to pronounce my son, I can feel that pain in him. But he couldn't drop tears because he's the medical you know, director of the hospital, or he can tell me, please, we lost him. And he walked out. What makes you think he walked out? Because he felt the pain of a mother who is losing a dear child. But he could not cry with me. And nobody cares how the doctor feels because we believe, oh, it's not their child. They don't understand. No, 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 no. They are human beings. Healthcare providers are human. They understand even more than you can imagine because they see it every time and there is nothing they can do. They have done everything magically in their power and capacity to bring this child back. But unfortunately, their expertise could not bring this child back. What do you think they are feeling? That it's okay that you lost a child? No, it's not okay. They are already dying inside silently but they cannot express it. It's about how we allow people to express their feelings, especially in healthcare. Hospitals need to uh, address the issue of, you know, I, I don't know how I'm going to say it. Psychologists and all that need to have an opportunity to speak to these people one-on-one. -on -one. It's not an easy journey. It's not an easy journey. To be in healthcare. That's just what I want to discuss today. I just want to encourage all my nurses out there, like me, all the CNS, because without CNS, there is no nursing. I'm telling you, we cannot operate without those assistants that we have with the CNS. Doctors cannot succeed without the nurses' help. Just like pharmacists, they cannot sell if the doctor don't diagnose diseases. So all of us are working in the same direction. The physical therapists, the occupational therapists, the speech therapists, the respiratory therapists, all of us are working in the same goal. And many of us will go through the same challenges. I want to encourage us to speak up and seek help. When you think you're mentally deviated, you know, seek help. It's not bad to ask for help. You know, since my son died, once in a while, I see a psychologist, you know, I see a psychiatrist to talk to me, you know, I go to my church, you know, for my pastor to talk to me. It's not that uh, 
I'm doing it because the Lord said do it. No, because I know it's helping me mentally. And when I come on Facebook and speak to you guys too, mentally I'm expressing my feelings instead of bundling it up, you know, crying in the corner. You know, sometimes when I talk about my child, I break down. It's okay. I don't break down because I want people to clap for me. I am not breaking down because I am the only one that lost a child. No, I'm breaking down because of the emotion and the attachment that I have with my son. And when I break down, most times it helps me to, you know, heal and then uh, able to take care of some other things around me. And that's what I ask of people, healthcare providers, to be able to express themselves. And it takes it all the way to our homes, in families. Families allow families to express how they feel. Every one of us have a unique way of dealing with stress and depression and all that. And we don't want people to be committing suicide just like that because of lack of knowledge, you know? It's not a good thing. May the Lord help us. I just finished a series of CPR today, you know? Briefly, it was awesome. And uh, my mind told me to talk about the healthcare providers how we treat them, how we see them, how we judge them. They are human beings. Healthcare providers are humans. They are people like you and I. They need time out. They need the time to, to process some things that we see in our field of job. We need time to express ourselves so we don't get depressed and get depressed and commit suicide. Suicidal rate is growing every day, but the worst part of it is growing even more in the healthcare providers, you know. It's growing even every minute among us. They get so burnt out and they cannot express it. Encourage everyone that is a nurse around you, you know, anyone in healthcare around you, encourage them. You know, if they have to cry when things happen, let them cry. If they have to yell, let them do what they have to do and stop piling it up. I feel sorry for us nurses. It's like a pastor in the church preaching. You expect pastor to be too perfect, you know? There are some certain situations that pastor will not preach. Some churches, when their pastors preach about sex, they look at them like, oh, this is our pastor. Oh my goodness, why is he talking about sex? Oh, why is she talking about sex right now? We're in church. Hello, is it not God that made the sex? <laughs> my goodness, yeah, I get so sick. I'm sorry, yo. What is it? But you're talking about canceling marriage. Then if you're canceling marriage, why are you not going to cancel about their relationship in bed? What is a crime then? Then we'll start judging our pastors. We'll start condemning them. Oh, that pastor, every time she will always teach about sex and all that. Okay, now you don't want to talk about sex in the church, but you're married and you're having sex in your house. Come on now. The truth be told. So who's going to go to hell right now? Is it the pastor that is teaching me? About sex, or you that is committing that sex in your house without bringing it to the open. This heaven is very hard. My secretary is dying here laughing. I don't know why she's laughing. She knows me sometimes, I just have to say it the way I feel. You know, just like I decided not to put pancake on my face or powder. My brother reached and said, This is your powder, girl. You need to stop. You see my face? I only have my eyeshadow and my lipstick now. I'm trying to clean my face. Then people will say, Oh, Jesse, oh, she needs to put her makeup. Then I put my makeup. Oh, she's putting it too much. She thinks she's all that. I can't please everybody. But I have to do what I have to do. That's what I'm saying. Nurses, healthcare providers, please, please, please. We need to express how we feel. And we appreciate you guys. Pastors in the house, we appreciate you all. Daddies in the house, I appreciate you guys. Moms in the house, you all are appreciated. Young and old, you all are very much appreciated. Every one of us deserves to be happy. And happiness doesn't just roll into your house. You have to call for it. You have to go for it. And you have to take it by force. That is the only way you'll be happy. Circumstances of life can never give you guarantee of happiness. But you as an individual have the right 
to be happy or unhappy. It's all about what you think. So choose to be happy. And please share this video. That's all you can do for your sister, Jessie. Share it, share it, subscribe, comment, encourage someone else. Healthcare providers are humans. You see a nurse clocking at work because her floor is so busy. Every time there's shortage of nurses at work, every day there's shortage of nurses. Instead of you having your own personal load that you're supposed to have, maybe six patients per day or in nursing homes, they do up to 12, 15, 20 patients per nurse. And then not just 20 patients per nurse, guess what? By the time you take your assignment from the child nurse and you go around and see your patients, introduce yourself that you're on board for the next 12 hours as the nurse on board, all of a sudden, the nurse on her, her bed called in that she's sick. The start of shift is already there. You have only two nurses. We were supposed to be three nurses in the whole of that wing. But we have two people. Each of us have 20 patients. And there's another hall with 20 patients which the nurse is supposed to come in. All of a sudden, by the time the child nurse finishes assignment and you accept your assignment, the nurse on her seat calls in. And the child nurse will tell you, ah, oh, there's shortage of staff. I'm so sorry to let you guys know that you, Jesse, and Nurse Marie will be working on her seat until we get someone else to cover her seat. But guess what? Because you cannot say no. You're already on board. You're already clocked in. Then they will divide her seat to both of us. Now we end up with 30, 30 patients with maybe two, two CNAs and one, one medication aid. You see what I'm talking about? How nurses get burnt out? And before you know it, there's a cardiac arrest in one hall. Before you know it, a patient has fallen. Before you know it, G2 dislodged. Before it, only you. From the time you clock in to the time you clock out, not even a break. And you get home. Some kind of a human being that was created as the man in the house will not take time to say, baby, you look tired and burnt out. How was your day? No, the next thing you will hear, Oh, you're supposed to be home one hour ago. You ran late. What's going on? Are we going to eat tonight? Honestly, it's only Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. I mean Jesus himself. <clears throat> that will judge us. That's all I can say. They don't even know what that woman is coming with. Her day was torn apart. She has not eaten. She has not even had a break. Still, she has to finish up her duties, give reports, and then leave late again. And she still have to go back to work the next day. And she's thinking about making sure the children will eat and the husband at home will eat before she will even take shower and eat her own food. It's already like four or five hours after her shift. Then there's somebody nagging around the neighborhood called the husband. They go through a lot. Anyone around these people need to love and cherish them. Our job is very tedious. Our job is heartbreaking. Our job is so hard. And this woman keep on going the same cycle one year, two years, and three. Before you know it, she's on blood pressure medication. Before you know it, heart attack. Guess what? The brother will still marry someone else. Truth be told. And you end up being in the grave. Those children will suffer. And that husband of yours will still go and marry another woman and move on with his life. Even his family members will tell him, ah, you have to move on. You know, the children will need another mom. Ah, you cannot kill yourself. You know, every one of us will die one day. Ah, take heart. Ah, you have to remarry this and that. And he will remarry for real. Wake up, call. We need to care for ourselves. Take a break and nurture yourself. That is my story today. It is the truth. It's bitter, but it's the truth. One life to live. No reproduction of life after death. You need to take care of you. Listen to me, men and women. I appreciate you. Take good care of you. Love you. And thank God for who you are. 
bless God where you are and where he's taking you. If you can't do it anymore, drop it. I tell people, I don't advocate for divorces and all that. Well, hello, you are the judge on your own situation. Take time to love you. Take time to appreciate you. Take time to nurture you. The body and mind and your mindset needs to be intact for you to function on your maximum functionality. If you have the ears to hear, you hear it. If you don't, keep on doing the same thing. One thing that you must take out of this broadcast right now is that if you die in the process of making sure every bill is paid, all situations are taken care of, everything is intact, people will still live. As a matter of fact, the same day that you died, people will still be eating. Even that your best husband will eat because his family and friends are well wishers. We say, hey, nah, you have to eat too. You cannot stand yourself so that you can live for these children. What your children? So he can live for another woman. And the brother will eat. As a matter of fact, they will make it like hot soup. Something very good and spicy that will wake him up. He will try and he will eat, and life goes on. Shame to the devil. We we'll rebuke that in Jesus' name. I hope I have made a little bit of sense. If you're just coming in late, please go back and watch this series. Share it, comment, and subscribe. Go to Sisters True Love Group International. On our YouTube, you will see this video on the YouTube in the next 30 minutes, one hour. That means it's going to upload it. Go to YouTube and subscribe, watch, you know, like, dislike, comment, whatever. It's going to be helpful. And sign up for my CPR. I gave a demonstration a little bit today because it's one student on Facebook. But you need to see me the action of my nurse's crop. When I'm teaching CPR, thank you, I've been one po posting the website. When I'm on my nursing scrub for real, for real, teaching a class of 10 to 20 people, you need to see CPR in another level now. It's not the same level that you just watched. You see the raw Jesse performing CPR in real life. Then you understand where your sister is coming from. I do not play when it comes to health. This is me. This is what I'm loving, and I love doing it. So please, please, please. Whenever you see me doing CPR online, I jump in, grab the idea, learn from it, share the idea, subscribe, comment, and encourage your loved one like me. That's all I ask for. Just learn. Knowledge is power. We can't go wrong in learning. You know what I mean? We cannot go wrong. And one thing I want to advocate, I'm almost at the edge of getting employment in nursing school to teach RUN students. I'm telling you, in case if you want to go into nursing, mm, you go it online because I will be teaching some nursing students, RUN students online. I'm almost about getting the contract completed. So your little Jesse here will be an instructor for an RUN program online. I praise God for that. When you list expect yourself the lord will begin to elevate you what an awesome god that i serve i'm excited i can't wait for that part of my life to be unfolded you know for me to really teach our students online come on now i feel good and i give god all the glory i give him all the praise and i appreciate god he is my way maker my destiny changer Ah, my ocean divider, my comforter, my provider, my God, in whom I trust so much, the God that is awesome and so real, that when he starts with you, he can never stop until he finishes his promises upon your life. I bless God every day.
and I thank God for people like you. You guys have a productive day today and be blessed as you watch me and be happy. Above all things, take time to take care of yourself because nobody else will do it for you. Thank you all for joining me. And I'm so sorry people are still joining. But I gotta go. Because as you can see, I'm in the office and I have to go back to work. Love you all. All the way from Houston, Texas. This is Jesse of Sisters True Logo International. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone. Mm.